I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Watership Down by Richard Adams. Oh, if, you, if you know my history with reading books and reviewing books that have talking animals, you know it doesn't go well. It doesn't go well. I don't get it. I might be the stupidest person on the planet, but I don't understand these talking animal books. I'm lost. I am baffled, flummoxed, confused. I am just disoriented the whole time I read these animal books where the animals talk to each other. Oh, and, and if you want to see my review of Redwall and Moss Flower, just type in Redwall or Moss Flower and my name into YouTube and the videos will come up. I got a problem, folks. I got a problem. I, I just, I got a problem. Let's talk about the cover first. We always talk about the book covers before we get into the book reviews. I think this is a nice, elegant cover. I think it has like a real classic novel feel to it. It's just got the simple rabbit. Books about rabbits. Talking rabbits. The book's about rabbits. God, it's just it's just a great little painting. And, and the artist's name, the artist is not listed in the book. And I couldn't find who did this painting, but it's very nice. I like it. I like it a lot. What about the book? Oh, and not only that, but there's a nice little map. This little map of Watership Down area. Watership Down is like a part of uh, southern England. In fact, I Google mapped it. And it actually takes place in a real area of England, just slightly south west of London, kind of in between London and Bath. I've been on those roads. I know what it looks like out there. Stonehenge is out in that area. Um, Downton Abbey is out in that area. If you want to get a feeling for the flavor of what we're talking about. Of the landscape, these little talking rabbits are bouncing around through. You know, so what? what is this? I mean, part of this is dark. I mean, let me read you the intro. Just this is not as lighthearted as Redwall. Just let me read you the introduction to this book about talking rabbits. Let me read you this introduction. And to let me tell, to tell me if you think this is for kids. Why do you cry out thus? Unless at some vision of horror, the house reeks of death and dripping blood. How so? Tis but the odor of the altar of sacrifice. The stench is like the breath from a tomb. Talking rabbits! It's like a horror novel, this thing. People have been traumatized by this book about topping rabbits. I mean, there's a cartoon that came out in 1970s or the 80s or whenever that it's and it's a horror show, talking rabbits murdering each other like it's just like they're just like they're Ted Bundy. It's crazy. People. I, I looked at the, briefly at this t cartoon on YouTube, and the comments section were filled with just, oh my god, this was the most terrifying thing I ever saw as a kid. I'm still scarred to this day. Talking rabbits! It's supposed to be cute! Ah, it's like a horror movie. This goes down like the Titanic with everybody drowning. I mean, okay, to Richard Adams' credit, the prose is gorgeous. The prose is gorgeous, and even the way the talking rabbits talk to each other is elegant. I mean, it's got some great dialogue. It's got great wisdom. I can see why this novel is considered a modern-day classic, if not just a classic overall. It's got all the trappings of the classic. It's got the allegory. It's got all of the um, situations and conversations that you expect from very high literature. 
talking rabbits! Here's the thing. In Redwall, I didn't understand the scale of the rabbits in comparison to the buildings and the wagons and the horses, because sometimes it seemed like the buildings, the wagons, and the horses were human-sized and the little animals were like little teeny, teeny mice. Other times in the Redwall series, it seems like the mice are as big as the wagons and the horses and stuff like that. So it's just a confusing, it's just a ball of confusion. In this one, though, it, the, the scale is, it makes sense. They're normal-sized rabbits living in the human world with normal humans and normal-sized cars and normal-sized fences. Normal, uh, every other animal out there is proportionally relational relationship to them as, 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 as if it was real. So they're just real rabbits talking to each other, murdering each other, but they're real sized rabbits. Okay. And here's the problem I had, but there's still a problem. There's still a problem. I'm mentioning the problems first. This is a fucking dynamite book. This is, the book is dynamite. I liked it. This is a great book before I'm just poking fun at some of the things that just... I'm, we're poking fun here, folks. This is a great book. Let's get that out of the way first before you think I'm harshing on this thing. You know, I mean, this book is lit. It's There's a reason it's a classic. I loved it. I loved the themes of the story. I loved the everything about it, except, you know, maybe the talking rabbits. The story could have maybe had humans in it and it would have made more sense for me. But we got rabbits talking. And one of the things they do when they talk is they speak in English. And half the stuff that they see, like there's a dog. Oh, there's a dog running through the field. Maybe we ought to avoid that field today because there's a big dog running through the field. But then the next day, there's a fox running through the field. Instead of calling it a fox, they've got a rabbit language for the fox. Like there's, okay, so it's not a fox, it's something else. It's like an Irabuia. Oh, there's an Irabuia running through the fields. And I'm like, what the Oh, but then in the glossary in the back, it gives the language of the uh, animals, right? Like half the stuff they see, well, there's a fence. Well, there's a duke de dee dot What's a duke de dee dot Oh, that's a car. You know, I mean, it's just like, why can't everything just be consistently English? Why does half of the rabbit language have to be made up words out of out of someone's ass when it should all just be flat English, you know, it's like, oh, there some, because some of the birds are called hawks, others are called the, do, the you know, the yakadiks. Well, I mean, okay, so there's a hawk, then the, the eagles are yakadiks. I mean, why can't the eagles be eagles and the hawks be hawks? Why do, or, or why don't they have, I, I know why they can't have everything be in rabbit language, because this would no, not make sense. But, you know... Having one out of every hundred words in rabbit language, that somehow makes sense. Talking book, animal talking books, I, they vex me, folks. They vex me, I'll be honest with you. But I did love the story of Fiverr and Hazel and Bigwig and Blackberry. And I love their journey. You know, it's got, it's got a great theme of human, humans taking over the nice landscape the it, it's it's like a very like anti-industrialized it's like the humans are just paving over everything including the rabbit homes you know they just they just want to live at home they just want to be at home they just want to live at home and so they they, they things are encroaching upon their land so they go on this journey to find a place called home they go in search of watership down or this this mythical place that they think will be their home and uh they get chased by other rabbits, they get chased by dogs, they get chased by cats, they get chased by birds. They get chased by eukaryotes and what to fucks and cheek to pumps. And I don't know what those were. They could have been, you know, squirrels or uh, monkeys. They could have been, you know, alligators. I don't know what they were. But they get chased by a lot of stuff. And it's sad. I can see why it traumatized a lot of people that were reading this when they were 12 years old. And towards the end, it all goes to shit. I mean, a little spoilery warning. But I'm supposing if you've uh, were watching this review, you probably already read the book. So you know what I'm talking about. There's rabbit on rabbit violence, people. Oh, my God. I've been around real rabbits. I mean, they can be. Oh, they're freaky. 
They're freaky. I mean, I've got a friend who has some rabbits living in her home with her. God knows why. I have no clue why she got rabbits living in her little apartment, but she does. And there's a ton of them, and they they they, they just they they're at each other all the time. It's like living to these rabbits. I don't know. They must be stressed as hell because they're living in a small apartment with a bunch of other rabbits. It's like it would be like living in a house where. Everybody else in the house wants to murder you on sight. And that's the way these rabbits are living right now. And and they thump. Boop, boop. Have you ever seen a rabbit thump the ground? Doo, doo, doo. I mean, it's like, it'll freak you out. I mean, it's loud. It's like someone taking a sledgehammer to the floor of the apartment. Boom, boom. I mean, it shakes like an earthquake. You're living in an earthquake. And it's, it's a little rabbit. It's just a little rabbit. I Oh my God! It's in the do, 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 just like I mean I don't even want I don't even want to approach the rabbit when it's doing that. Thumping rabbits with their back feet. Oh God, that's that's a oh my gosh! And then and then imagine if they could talk. Imagine if they could all talk in that little apartment. Oh my gosh! The things they'd be saying to each other. I can't. I mean, I'd get shut down. My YouTube channel get shut down. What do I think of Watership Down? Eh. We had a little fun with this video, cracking on some other stuff, just because talking animal books and me don't sit well together. I don't know if I can continue, but I mean, it's actually a pretty good book. I can see why it's a modern-day classic. I give it a good 7.5. I would have given it about a 9.5 had it been about anything but talking rabbits! If it would have been about humans in the same situation, I probably would have liked it a lot more. But it is about rabbits. It's an allegory, you know. It is what it is. 7.5 out of 10. Watership down. I do not know why I torture myself so.